What is up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And on the phone, we got Rosa from Black Rose Maze. Thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Hi, Alex. Thank you so much. I like that. The quarantine. What did you say with the introduction? That was funny. <laughs> calling from the quarantine zone. <laughs> funny i love it i'm yeah. doing good how are you doing hanging in there i gotta say yeah. i, I like I, I like that you like that because i will say that the most metal thing i've ever done in my career is interviewing like a bunch of like black metal bands in like the heart of a quarantine zone while it's thundering and lightning out it was like the most metal thing i've ever done i love it that's awesome yep. um, uh, good. but i was just listening to the self-titled debut album and it's absolutely amazing great work on here what i was wow. curious is is for people who haven't heard it yet do you think that the first single that you released in the dark could that serve as like a clear representation of what the whole album is going to sound like or is that just the beginning just scratching the surface Mm, very good question. Well, thank you for the kind words. I really appreciate it. So, um, you know what? In the dark, um, you know, so I wrote In the Dark, and then there's there's other writers who collaborated on this album. So In the Dark is, uh, is, is just, it's just a, a little tease, actually. Uh, but, but in the lyrics, it's probably what you're going to hear. You know, the lyrics is like, you know, independence, and I'm coming out, and I'm strong, and... Uh, that, that you'll hear a lot of in the album, lyrically, but as far as musically is concerned, yeah, it's just a little, like, a little teaser, because there's, there's big, there's, there's more, there's harder, and, yeah, there's more than that, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, like, you know, being that this was the debut album, was there kind of like, you know, obviously you want to start off very strong, you want to leave people wanting more, was there kind of like a preconceived idea of what you wanted this album to sound like, or did things kind of like, I call them like happy accidents, did things kind of like happen organically? That's exactly it, actually, I love that, happy accidents, I'm going to keep that, it was a happy accident for sure, because... I knew what I, I knew that I wanted to collaborate this time around with this album. I really do because my biggest goal in life is to collaborate with other artists. I learned so much from that, and I really it was really important me to do for me to do that, and I did. And um, it's so rewarding, and I just can't wait for the album to come out because you know to see the the whole thing and 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 just feel it. Um, and it, it, it definitely I was definitely stepping out of my comfort zone and. Um, and so, yeah, this is going to be uh, very different. I, I didn't know what I was getting into. I just knew that I wanted to collaborate with many different artists, musicians, writers. And that's exactly what we did. So I'm, I'm yeah, really super proud of this. Awesome. And, you know, uh, also collaborating with Jeff Scott Soto. I mean, I just, uh, before, you know, the world ended, I actually saw him play with Sons of Apollo uh, oh, wow. in New York City. And he was just phenomenal. I mean, I imagine working with Jeff Scott Soto has taught you a lot of new things as well, right? Oh, for sure. So, like, don't laugh, but my first um, metal concert was actually Sons of Apollo. Oh, wow. Um, no no that. judgment yeah. at all. That's a great <laughs> first metal concert to see. Yeah, so Sons of Apollo came to Montreal a few years, and I and uh, so, yeah, so I, I went to see his uh, his show, and of course, he's my trans Siberian Orchestra mate, so I, immediately, there's one thing that I knew, is that when I knew that this album was going to be created, the first thing I said was, I definitely would love a duet with Jess Soto, and he agreed and accepted and I was like just the happiest girl ever um it's big for me uh, to be to be collaborating with with Soto because you know I, I saw him with Sons of Apollo and I was just I was so impressed like he is such an amazing friend man he has so much emotion energy his tone I mean, I, I would love, I aspire to be like the female version of Soto, you know, I, 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 I really would love that. He's just wow. That's a great goal to have because you know what what I've always liked about him is he's a great singer like I guess he's classically trained or something but like you know he always hits the range but like he doesn't let you know it get in the way of his stage presence so like no. he's so he's always able to kind of like uh, you know interact with the crowd while hitting the notes. Normally it's like seen as like one or the other. Yeah, he's just got it. He's just got that whole package. He's got the whole thing. He's just he's 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 in his element. He's a performer, period. You know, he's uh, I'm I'm in awe of him. Every time I hear him perform, I'm like wow. And he never he never m messes up. You know, like even even if we're like on tour and we're having fun, and I just decide to sing a song, you know, hum a song or whatever, just for fun or something I hear on the radio, he right away he'll be like, oh, that's not the right key. You're in the right. You're not in the right key. And I'm like, what? <laughs> he's, he kills me. Like he's just so good at it. He's got amazing ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
And being that, you know, like, uh, and being that, you know, you play with Trans-Siberian Orchestra, are you going into Black Rose Maze with a completely different mind frame, or is there kind of like a usual method behind the madness that almost applies to every project that you work with? No, not at all. I mean, I have to say, though, that uh, Trans-Siberian Orchestra kind of uh, helped me uh, in a sense where I kind of wanted to go a little more hard rock. Like, I was like, oh, I could... You know, it kind of pushed me to, like, next level. It helped me make the decision about, do I want to go, like, deeper with my songs, or should I keep it, like, pop rock, or, like, I don't know. But it really made me decide, like, it was it was, it was was really because of TSO, because of the intensity and the songs that I sing with them, that I was like, oh, and, you know, of course, musically, their songs are insane. So I was like, well, you know what, I'm going to... I'm going to push it. I'm going to go next level. And I kind of did. I allowed myself to choose songs and, and work with the producer to, to build songs that were a little, you know, heavier than what I'm used to. So that's because of TSO for sure. So you'll be doing death metal before you know it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know. Man. We'll see. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> yeah. Never say never. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, obviously, you know, singing is one thing, but then there's also lyrics that you have to incorporate as well do you need to hear music before you come up with lyrics or is there ever a time where maybe like you have lyrics or a story and maybe that could help dictate the music itself that's a great question it's actually a bit of both for me uh sometimes i'll just get i'll I'll, you know what you know what my technique uh is often i have to put on trance music like enya sort of (laughs) no let's go house trance okay so you get a, like a good house trance beat and it takes me into a trance and then that's how I can actually come up with a melody uh, like music melody and, and words so that's one technique that I use that's helped me throughout the years another one is a little bit of both of what you mentioned so sometimes I'll get an instrumental song that I like and I'll vibe off that not entirely the whole song maybe just pieces of it and then a, another sense of writing for me would be just to write out a story. Like, for example, I asked my mom to give me three phrases uh, to describe such and such. And she sent me these three words or phrases, and I worked around that to build a song. So that's what I would do. But sometimes it's got to come from outside. Sometimes it comes from inside. There's so many different techniques that an artist, you know, uh, uh, learns. And, uh, and, yeah, so for me, that's what works. Uh, so it's a bit of, bit of everything. That's awesome. It's cool that you have uh, your mom working with you as well. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, my mom's from... That's Dr- actually um, how I wrote In the Dark. I um, I asked her, that was the first song they released uh, that we released from the album June 7, and that's how I wrote In the Dark. My mom is a part of that. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. My, my mom's from Germany, so she helped me with the song, It would and she would sound like the Andrew Sisters covering Rammstein, so not the best. Oh, you me? You're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but, um... It, it's funny like have you ever had like the best lyrics ever but then they're always like one syllable over or under like all the arrangements or something like oh, that I, I can't stand that that happens that happens and i hate it i hate it so much it happened to me because i had to rewrite a song over and over and over again and it took me a year just for stupid syllables and then you're like you you just there's so many things either you throw it away or you start again or you reverse the verses or oh my god it's just crazy yeah it, wait a minute wait a minute do you write music uh, I, I'm going to use that very, 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 very loosely. <laughs> yeah, I play piano, but uh, I, I, uh, nice. I cover death metal songs and video game music, so it's a different uh, technique. Cool, that's cool, man. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you tend to like to leave lyrics open to interpretation, or being that you really do put your heart and soul into it, you kind of want the listener to like be engaged in the subject matter that you sing about? Um, another good question. Yeah, a bit of both, again. Like, there's, like, in the dark, there's no way that I'm gonna... Like, that really talks about, like, a, a moment in my life that was deep and uh, emotional for me, and it took me a while to come out with that. So th- I wanted the truth to come out and nothing but the truth of what I was feeling. Uh, so there was no way that I would, like, you know, I would keep that really truthful and simple. And then there's another song where I would either write a metaphor or I would... some Like, half of it would be about me, but the rest I kind of embellished a little bit so it's a bit half and half you know it just really depends on on the vibe at the moment but at the end if it's a truly good song and i'm really happy with you know the melody and the whole package and i'll leave it as it is but there's there's you know i could tell you like which songs are real and which songs are i kind of embellished a little but uh but still sticking to this to you know the truth you know the, the the title and the and the true meaning of the song 
So, so you approach lyrics from many different angles. It's not like this self-titled album is like a concept album or anything nah, like that. Nah, I haven't been there yet. And you know what? I'm all about feeling and connections, and I'm a big feeler. So whatever I'm feeling, that's what's coming out, you know? Because I feel like if I have to work a little over and, like, try to, like, you know, make a, like a story behind it, I think it's going to take too long, you know, I'm, I, I don't really do that in my life. I'm, I feel everything. I go with my gut. I, I feel it. I do it. And, and that's it. I don't really map anything out, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I, that's just who I am. That's my personality. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that, especially because in the dark took a long time. Do you find it like the longer you're working on something, the harder it is to kind of maintain that feel? Uh, it depends. It depends. You know, like it, at the time in the dark, I really wanted it to, to be right. I really wanted that message to come out because the moment in my life that I was going through, I was emotionally, verbally abused. I never wanted to write about it. And now I did. And because it was the first time, I wanted to get it right and true. But now, as as I'm going to move on to my second album, I don't know. You know, that's a good question. Maybe, maybe my writing is going to change the way I write and the way I feel and maybe it won't take me as long, you know, for the message to come out because now I feel like I'm so free. I feel like, ah, at last, it's out. It's in the open. I can, like, let that go and move on to the next chapter, you know, kind of thing. So, I don't know. I think it's uh, that's a really good question. We'll see. Yeah, it almost seems like this album represents closure in some aspects but opens up doors to other aspects of life. Absolutely, and plus the, there's another writer on this song as well, so it's just... You know, every people I've been told to like, oh, the album, uh, you know, the the the, um, the message that's coming out from the album is, you know, very strong and like uh, empowering. And I'm like, wow, I didn't really put that together. It just kind of happened. So you see, when you let things flow naturally, sometimes what happens, you know, like the intention was there, but I didn't really work extra hard for every single song to be like the piece of the puzzle. At the end of the day, it's like a maze, you know, which. Again, I didn't even know that there was a song that was going to come out that was Maze. Like, I didn't know. I mean, I picked the, the, the name Black Rose Maze, but it's just crazy how everything flows and just connects. It's insane. It's wonderful. Yeah. Being that this, like, I feel like being that you attack, you know, you write lyrics from many different angles and the music is inspired from different angles, I feel like listeners can also approach this from different angles, right? I, I call this album a very shuffle friendly. Like, people could, you know, like, a lot of artists are like, if you want to listen to the album, listen to the first song and with the last song. But it almost seems like listeners could uh, digest this album in any way they want, right? Oh, for sure. It's, uh, you know, there's a bit of everything. I think there's a bit of pop rock, there's melodic rock, there's hard rock. It's just, uh, it's a big open, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an open, open, open game, I guess, you know, like, uh, depending on what you're feeling, uh, some people might fast forward, might not, oh, I like the slow version, I like this fast version. It's, it's, like I said, it's a big collaboration with so many people that, for sure, but I think that it's fun and exciting too, because people like that, you know, a lot of people like that the songs are not the same and doesn't have a story to it, so we'll see. Yeah, and obviously, it's really cool that you take inspiration from many different artists. Like, I think a lot of people have kind of, like, labeled this album as, like, a solo album and stuff, but, um, like, I'd imagine that it's a very collaborative effort, and everybody takes inspiration from each other. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Listen, I am a hardcore hockey player. I played hockey since I'm four. I am a team player. My biggest goal in life is to collaborate with other artists. Like, I learn so much it's so rewarding gets me to step out of my comfort zone and you know how many aha moments i've had every time i work with people uh you know closely or or from far away i just learn something all the time and the energy and and it's just i i'm obsessed with working with with many different artists i feel for me for myself i keep growing and growing and learning and i love it i love that that that's awesome being a hockey fan uh so, uh, can you please, like, uh, leave my Rangers alone since you're up in Montreal? <laughs> Are you ready for the games coming? Yeah, I know. Montreal Habs fan, hardcore here. We got some hardcore fans, uh, hockey fans in Montreal, that's for sure. Yes. Yeah, again, <laughs> just leave my Rangers alone. Leave my Rangers alone. <laughs> yeah. We, okay, maybe. <laughs> like, we'll form an alliance and we'll just go after the Devils. I think that's a fair <laughs> compromise. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. You ready for the most difficult question of the whole interview? I stumble everybody with this, and that's why I love oh, really? last asking it. You're yep. good, you're good. How do you know when a song is done? Uh, it's 
you just do, man. You just feel it in your bones. You just do. You're like, this is done. This is, you know what? Actually, I do have an answer for that. When I get myself <laughs> the shit shivers, <laughs> the, the goosebumps, man. That's when it. That's when you know it's done. You know, like when you when you read it and you're like, oh my god, like, brr, you know, you get that shiver shit. <laughs> that's when you know it's a good song. That's when you know it's done and you're done and that's it. But it's uh, it, it could take a day, it could take a week, it could take a year. Yeah. from my experience but uh what? yeah I, I i've listened to some of the songs on the album in my car you know before they were you know when they were in a demo um stage and um you know i've i've already had tears i've uh, had goosebumps uh i played it over and over again on a highway you know you blast that shit in the car and uh, it's uh it's i'm excited man i really can't wait for this album to be released I can't wait for other people to hear it as well. I've been telling a lot of other people about it. and But, I mean, what if you get that goosebump feeling upon just hearing the first riff before anything else is written? That too can happen. <laughs> uh, instrumental, you mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that that's actually easier than, lyri- than lyrics. Because, you know, when, you're fe- when you, you close your eyes and you hear something, you know right off the bat, like for the first eight bars like if it's if you feel it or not that's how i am anyway it's the same way when i'm listening to somebody sing or i'm watching somebody perform you know right away that you know that's that's how i work you it's all about feeling it's all about the the emotion it's uh it's all about a few things you know so i'm hoping that people will enjoy the album and get you know goosebumps and the shit shivers <laughs> i definitely can see it happening if, if not then i'm just going to assume right. they're a cyborg Hey, that's cool, man, coming from somebody from New York. <laughs> the hardcore capital. We don't get goosebumps. We we inflict them. <laughs> You're hilarious. I love this. <laughs> Best Thank interview today, man. <laughs> Thank you. That means a lot. I have I a couple it. more questions for you, but... Um, because I thought, not like, you, we talked about, like, the different sounds, but I got many different vibes from each song. Like, In the Dark, I thought it was very different from a song like Free, very different from a song like Earth Calling, or versus, like, a song like Call Me Now. Is it fair to say that many different emotions were felt during the course of making this album? Oh, yeah, for sure. But like I said, there, there's other writers that wrote these songs. So, for instance, um, Only You was a song from Cliff Magnus, which is the writer of Avril Lavigne. So this song was given to us. And we chose it because I like it. It makes me step out of my comfort zone. My voice is so different in this in the, in this song, and it's like one of my favorite songs. I love it. And of course, a real living is Canadian, so why not, right? Yeah. So yeah. again, when I when I put this album together, I wasn't thinking of any uh, any puzzle. You know, I'm not trying to piece anything together. It was just simply a collaboration and Earth Calling as well. It's uh, written from Luna Atire, which is she's she's uh, in the states, but she's also Italian as well, and. Uh, and that was something that I chose because I like to step out of my comfort zone as well, you know, like I mentioned. So I was just like, wow, these are challenging. And, oh, you know what? I'm vibing this one. Let me try this one. And then they kind of all got together. But, but you know, it was it was really a big collaboration. That's all it was. It was like an all-dressed pizza, you know, just keep throwing throw top, toppings on it. And then just hopefully, I, I was like, hopefully it'll, you know, it'll be a great album, you know, because you never know. Yeah. And I mean, and like, do you almost kind of have to like adjust your voice in a way to like fit, you know, the different sound? Is it almost kind of like you have to change strategies every time? Nah, I, it's impossible. I can't do that. I'm uh, I just sing. I'm a belter. I'm not technically trained. I just sing my emotion. And that's another thing I had to consider too is, can I sing this song? So a lot of times I would be like just trying to sing it, you know, in my room or in the car. And, and if it feels right, I'll sing it. But if it don't feel right, I'm not doing it. So I'm just a singer. I just sing it and I'm all emotions. That's why with me, live is where it happens. Like I'm not a studio. I don't like... I love, like, making an album, of course, don't get me wrong, but, you know, singing in a studio for me is boring. I don't like it. It's not one of my favorite things to do, but put me on a stage live, that's where the magic happens. So, there's a lot of things to consider, but I won't adjust my voice to it. I mean, obviously, volume, dynamics, yes. You know, I can't start to, like, belt a song when it starts off nice and soft, that you learn with experience, but, um, you know, for, for for the message that's coming out of the song, but no, I, I won't adjust. I just sing. I just sing. That's the only way to do it. But and I'd imagine when you're executing the material live, because like when you're in the studio, I mean, I, I can only imagine how frustrating it is that you're getting your groove on in the vocal booth, but then you have to stop in the middle of it to do another take and like you can't sing through the whole song. So live is just like the most organic. 
Oh, yeah, for sure. But it's not really most like the stop and go, stop and go in, in the studio. For me, it's all about feel. It's all about energy and connection. What do you want me to connect with? Like the walls? There's nothing for me to feed off. But but I'm mature enough to know that I have to sing and it's got to get done. And, and the, the vocals are going to come out. But I miss the magic of when you're on, when you're live. And it's like a, a, you're, 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 you're like next level, like another notch. Like something magical happens and you, you're, you feel like you're floating when you're singing. And like it's just magical. But in the studio, it doesn't. Yes, you're excited because it's an album. I don't mind stop, go, stop, go. But I wish there was like, I wish it was the same feeling it was on stage. You know, that's that's what I meant about that. But I mean, at the same time, it's, it is what it is. You know, we have to go through that process. And I try to make the best of it when I'm in my studio. You know, like I try to sometimes uh, have people come in and sit on the sofa. And that kind of, you know, kind of, you know, makes a, a, a bit of a difference. But, you know, not really, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, wait, being that, like, you, you mentioned, like, that these songs almost kind of, like, capture an emotion that you were feeling at that time. Does it, when you re-execute them live, does it almost put you back in that state of mind as Absolutely. when you were first writing it? Oh, yeah. And then it enhances it, too. It makes it, like, times ten because you're actually singing to these people in front of you. Now you're actually telling them and showing them, like, this is this is what it, you know, that's my story. Like, it's it's insane the feeling you get when you write a song versus when you don't write a song. Oh, my God. It, it's, uh, it's a game changer when you're singing it live. Yeah. I've always wondered, and, and obviously I'm not judging uh, these vocalists by any means, but I've always wondered how a vocalist is able to sing and feel this emotion when they don't write the lyrics. Like, I'm not going to mention bands, but there are a couple of bands where, like, other members write the lyrics and then they just sing it, but they say, "Oh, it resonates with me." I'm like, "How though? You, it didn't come from you." I've always, I was always curious about that. Well, you just have to relate it with something else that happens in your life. Like every song I sing, whether it's whether it's not mine or it's a cover song, it's always first of all the singer is going to choose the vocalist is going to choose this song because it resonates with them because it gives them some kind of meaning, even if it's a little bit, tiny bit. So they're gonna, you know, they're gonna. Re- like they're gonna sing this song and say, "Oh, this in memory of," or like a grandfather, or a past, or like a a, a love, a, a heartbreak, or like a new car. I don't know, but it's always gonna always like really um, um, resonate with something that happens in their lives. They're gonna make it happen. Like a true artist, a true performer is definitely gonna switch it on and find something because that's what we do. You know, that's everybody knows that when you sing. I know I do. The emotion has to come out of your lyrics. So if you're telling the story, tell the story. Read the story. What is it about? Imagine it. Like a perfect example is, you know, I don't have children, right? So I I was singing for um, for an audition, let's say, and uh, I, I had to be very um, convincing and emotional. And I was playing the part of a mother. And they're like, well, this child is dead. Like you really have to like come out and sing about this dead child. And I'm like, okay. So I didn't have a child, so I used my dog. I used my beautiful seven-year-old big dog, and I was like, oh, my God, what if she was dead? So you have to switch off and play this, you know, character where you're like, oh, my God, I, I'm I'm coming to you now. My dog is dead, and there you go. Switch, that fucking switch, oops, excuse me, that switch comes on, and then there you go. It's coming out of your performance. So it really is, you have to be imaginative and find, find, find things. A real professional is going to find things to compare it with, you know? Yeah, I, I, I'd imagine it's almost kind of like when a teacher is reading to kids and they have to read with, like, expression to or in order to get the emotion and the imagery across. I feel like it's kind of like that methodology. Well, you know somewhat. I mean, yeah, you, you can't, like, kids is one thing. Age group is another thing. You know, I teach voice lessons and when I teach a 14-year-old, it's different than when I'm teaching adults, too, you know? like it doesn't always apply to each so you really have to know your crowd know who you're singing to and what emotion to put out you know like you know you ha- really have to be careful you have to go as far as can I curse can I not curse what can I wear can I you know what is this what kind of venue am I singing at there's so many things to consider so yeah. it's the same thing with delivering the song of course and the lyrics of course yeah. of course and the audience I mean don't don't yeah. be like me parents I was singing Smoking in the Boys by Motley Crue in kindergarten and it got me in a lot Smoking of trouble in the boys room. Oh my god, I remember that. Yeah, I was singing that before I knew my ABCs. Okay, I'm the boys. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, um, uh, it, so before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Really enjoyed this discussion. Um, just obviously, you know, thanks to a virus that I'm not naming on my outlet, just because I'm <laughs> trying to avoid giving it promotion. Um, but I'd imagine when all this is over and, you know, we do return to normalcy, we'll be seeing Black Rose Maze on the road quite a bit. Any chance of be coming to the States? 
Absolutely. It's definitely going to happen. I'm saying yes. And um, yeah, for sure. I, I really hope to uh, see you at a show. And thank you so much, Alex. This has been great. Thanks for having me. Of You're course. amazing. Your energy is amazing. I'm really glad that we connected. And uh, let's let's stay connected. Let's definitely. keep in touch. Definitely. Yeah. Let's do a part two when the next album comes. I would love it. You're killer, man. Awesome. Yeah, stay in touch. Go find me on social media or something like that and tag me when you're going to post or like uh, the interview. And Oh, yeah. It'll be uploaded in five minutes after I hang the phone up. Oh, wow. That's awesome. All right. But thank you. On what, uh, on what site or like what? Um, YouTube. Heavy. YouTube, my website, heavy.nyc, and I'll share the link on all the social media platforms that everybody's using. Oh, okay. Yep. Heavy.nyc. Okay, cool. <laughs> But thank you so much, everybody. We are here with Rosa of Black Rose Maze. Be sure to pick up the self-titled debut coming out August 7th. Be a Frontiers. Pick it up then when supplies last forever. We'll see you next time on Heavy New York.